Being anti-American is work. Living in America is life. This phrase has become very popular in the Chinese community in recent years. So what does it mean? Let's look at an example first. Chen Ping, a professor of economics at Fudan University and Beijing University, is known for his anti-U.S. rhetoric on Weibo and on various forums. He has nearly four million fans on the popular Chinese social media Weibo, and is known as an anti-American warrior. In a speech at the National Research Institute of Tsinghua University, Chen Ping said that if he had a monthly salary of 2,000 RMB in China, his life experience would be much more comfortable than having 3,000 dollars in the United States, and said that the U.S. is in dire straits. Recently, there was a power outage in Texas due to low temperatures and snowstorm. Chen Ping, who was in the U.S., posted on his Sina Weibo account on February 17th that although he is in the high-tech district of Austin, he still has no electricity. He said that China cannot follow the Western model and pursue unsustainable modernization and urbanization, and attached a selfie of himself with a standalone house behind him. He also said that the U.S. military is still boasting of a nuclear war with China and Russia, but a single cold wave has crippled the power grid and traffic in nearly half of the U.S. coastal areas. According to Radio Free Asia, a Google Maps image and a U.S. property search. Showed that the owner of the standalone house shown in the selfie was Chen Ping's. According to real estate transaction records, Chen Ping's U.S. residence was built in 2013 on a 7,800 square foot lot with 2,725 square feet of living space, making it a high-end residential area. Property transaction records show that Chen bought this house with his wife in August 2017. The sale price was 394,000 USD at the time, and is now valued at 416,000. The search also revealed that Chen has invested in real estate in the United States as early as 1991, when he bought a property that was sold in February 2020 for 419,000, making a profit of 350,000. Radio Free Asia asked Chen about this, but he did not respond. Netizens jokingly called Chen Ping a perfect representation of what it means to be anti-American as work, living in America as life. Other people like Chen Ping who went against their words of anti-Americanism include Jin Canrong, the vice dean of the School of International Relations at Renmin University. Jin's most famous statement is about the relationship between China and the United States, when he said, "When we meet the United States, we always win, not only win but also win twice." This unique interpretation of the phrase "win-win situation," meaning "win twice," made Professor Jim famous in the first place. Subsequently, Jin Sanrong boasted on many public occasions and even made the assertion that in the future of manufacturing, there will only be two countries in the world: one called China and the other foreign. Other famous quotes of his include, "It will only take a few hours to destroy the U.S. military bases in the Pacific region of Asia." Huawei's technology has long surpassed the U.S. and is only using theirs simply to spare them some dignity. Democracy and freedom are poison. It's a cult. Full of self-confidence, Jin Sanrong has once again gained countless fans. In the eyes of millions of Chinese netizens, the former Professor Jin has become the most knowledgeable netizen on international current affairs in the United States. He is respected as the so-called national teacher in China. He once said publicly that he does not recommend sending his children abroad to study. However, last year, a video of him officiating the wedding of his son in the U.S. was released on the internet, and netizens called Jin Sanrong hypocritical and even sharply criticized him for sending his son to school in the U.S., calling him a foreign dog. Some netizens also asked, "Is it true that Professor Jin is the same as being anti-America as work?" Living in America is life. The first anti-American warrior in China, Sima Nan, has a wife and children living in the United States, 
and his assets have also been transferred to the United States. After delivering a speech against the United States in China on New Year's Eve, Si hurriedly flew to the United States to spend the New Year with his wife and children. However, at the Washington International Airport, Si was suddenly caught and injured by the escalator and was sent to the emergency room in a coma. After the media reported the incident, his whereabouts in the United States were exposed. This angered many Chinese 50 cent trolls and he was criticized as being a traitor. The media asked him why he went to the United States if he is anti-American, and he replied without any shame, being anti-American is work, living in America is life. This famous quote of his has been passed down to this day. Song Xiaojun, China's leading anti-American mouthpiece on CCTV, is also one of the authors of a best-selling book published in 2009 named China is Not Happy. The book argues that China's past integration into the Western-dominated international system is against China's national interests and that China should promptly adjust its strategy and foreign policy toward the West, especially towards the United States, and use its own national strength to enrich its country and strengthen its military. The book said that China should make use of their own national power to become a superpower, to lead the world and to establish a new order in the international community. Since then, there have been a fervent anti-American sentiment in China. Song Xiaojun made a lot of money from the angry Chinese people and then applied for a green card for immigrant investors. Isn't it ironic that he was able to earn money to move to America thanks to his anti-American book? Yuan Mu, the famous former anti-American mouthpiece of the state council, was the spokesman for the Chinese State Council at the time of the June 4th Tiananmen Square Massacre. Yuan's famous line was that no one died in Tiananmen Square. He was surprisingly calm when he told this lie and became famous because of that. The whole world is interested to know just what happened in Tiananmen Square. Did Deng Xiaoping give the PLA orders to go into the square and clear out the demonstrators? The PLA troops marched into Tiananmen Square to fulfill their task of imposing martial law to protect the order in the capital. And no casualty resulted from the clearing of Tiananmen Square. Not one people died on Tiananmen Square. Yuan was known for his hatred of the United States and his anti-Americanism, but then something happened that shocked everyone. Chapter 14 of the Memoirs of the U.S. Ambassador to China during the June 4th event describes James Husky, a U.S. consulate official and his experience in receiving a special lady. The memoirs state that at the time, the attacks on the United States by several Chinese authorities were particularly sharp. The most violent of these attacks came from State Department spokesman Yuan Mu. However, in October of that year, a young woman sat down in front of Husky. Husky looked at the young woman's application and saw that her last name was Yuan. When he looked at her father's name, he quietly turned up the volume on his microphone under the table. He wanted the Chinese employees in the consulate and the other Chinese people outside to be able to hear their conversation. In a voice that everyone in the hall could hear, he asked, Are you really Yuan Mu's daughter? The woman leaned forward and replied in a low voice, Yes, I am Yuan Mu's daughter. In a voice of disbelief, Husky said, I can't believe that Yuan Mu who hates America so much and insults us on a daily basis, would want his daughter to study in America. Yuan's daughter then replied timidly in Mandarin, He is him, I am me. Yuan's daughter did well in school, and Husky eventually issued her a visa to study in the United States. But how could Yuan Mu allow his daughter to study in such an evil country? Yuan's daughter later settled in the United States, and Yuan also moved to the United States after retiring. His dual personality was unbelievable to Westerners. The most ironic of all is the famous 50 Cent Army opinion leader Ran Xiang on Weibo, known for being anti-American and pro-communist. Her real identity is Yuan Xiaoliang, the wife of Australian Chinese internet writer Yang Hengjun. There are many videos on the internet showing Yuan Xiaoliang's frequent comments in defense of the Chinese communist dictatorship and criticism of Western democracy and freedom. She has a reputation for being a big Wu Mao or 50 Cent, a name she seemed to agree with. In one of the videos, she said that people called patriots like her 50 Cent. 
In another video, she answers a reporter's question about multi-party democracy by saying, we haven't found any successful examples of that kind of American system here in Asia. In May 2018, Yuan Xiaoliang's family moved to the United States, where she published an article titled Confessions of a Wonder Woman, stating that she was anti-American because of work and came to America for a living. However, on January 19th of 2019, when Yuan Xiaoliang arrived in Guangzhou from New York with her husband Yang Hongjun and their daughter, Yang was taken away by Chinese state security officers at the airport and has been held in custody since. According to Reuters, Yang worked for China's Ministry of State Security for 10 years in the 1990s and was formally charged with espionage by the Chinese Communist Party on October 7, 2020. It is not known whether this self-proclaimed democracy activist is a double agent. In an interview with the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, ABC, Yuan told the story of her husband's arrest at the Guangzhou airport, saying that they were stopped by a group of men who said they had problems with their document and then took her husband away. She and her daughter then went to Shanghai, but the authorities would not let them leave the country. Yuan Xiaoliang cried and said she had not heard from her husband since he was arrested. She said that the person she lives with every day has suddenly disappeared and that she has no information about him and does not know how he is doing. She said that her lawyer has not been able to see him, so she has not been able to start the legal process. Yuan also appealed to the Australian government to help rescue her husband. Many online comments about Yuan pointed out ironically that she used to be a major 50 cent netizen who often belittled the democratic system in democratic countries and praised the Chinese communist dictatorship. But now she blamed Australia for not paying enough attention to her husband's human rights and said that she doesn't deserve sympathy. Many anti-American Chinese people have a strange complex. They claim to be patriotic, raising the banner of anti-Americanism at home, and strongly oppose and disparage everything the United States does. But when it comes to the practical issue of immigrating to America and sending their children to study, work, or even settle in America, they spare no effort to transfer their relatives and property to this evil democratic country they so condemn such as the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom, rather than to North Korea, the genuine socialist country that they praise so much. Some of these people have already settled in the United States. Some have only sent their wives and children to the United States, while they are still in China singing the praises of the CCP and making money as anti-American warriors. There is no way to know what they're really thinking, but their dual personalities are very puzzling.